I'm sure you would have seen people wearing things like these uh, on TV and at gigs, they're called in-ear monitors and they're molded to your ears. I'll take them out because I actually can't hear anything with them in. Therein lies the problem. They're molded to your ears. These uh, were my spares. I had two drivers in, a top uh, and a low. My main ones had three drivers, so a top and middle and a low end one. Whilst the sound quality is absolutely amazing for when you're playing, it's very isolating and that's actually something I want to come on to in the topic I'm talking about this week. In the UK, there is no law to say you can't wear headphones when you're riding a bike. It's perfectly legal to do so, just as it is perfectly legal to uh, listen to music or the radio whilst you're driving a car. This video isn't about the rights and wrongs, you're all big enough and ugly enough and old enough to make your own decisions. But I will say this, Yes, you can be prosecuted for riding a bike without due care and attention and causing a danger to other, and you should be. However, I think more important than the risk of being arrested is the safety elements that come into it. Now, I've never ridden with headphones in. I certainly wouldn't ride a bike with these in. Uh, I've never ridden with in-ear type headphones or over-the-top headphones because I really don't like the level of disconnect that I have with the outside world. I didn't like it when I was gigging and I couldn't hear my bandmates or the audience, and I certainly don't like it when I'm on the bike and I'm riding around traffic. But having sound in your ears isn't the only way to listen to something when you're on a bike. There are bone conducting headphones, and I'll get into how they work slightly later, that essentially allow for the same sort of environment as you get when you're driving a car, where you can hear somebody talking to you, you can hear the traffic around you, and the music is in the room with you. However, that said, there are some circumstances where I would not listen to any music or podcasts. For example, when I'm riding in conditions like this. on burst water main and car underwater under the underpass mental but despite those brief pockets of intense traffic most of my commute is either on bike tracks like this or on quiet moors roads like you usually see in my videos and when the wind's blowing from the coast and the rain's in your face and you're staring at a patch of white light on the concrete in January and February and you've commuted 150, 200 kilometers that week, the ability to wear a pair of these and listen to a podcast or perhaps some music um, while still keeping your awareness of your surroundings is pretty valuable to maintaining that commitment to commuting. Positive action of the push button on my right side here makes pausing and playing your music or your podcast so when I'm riding along bike paths like this, I can listen to Mitch Docker and they're bolting. David Miller or Daniel Freib with ease. So how exactly do these things work? Well, the famous composer Beethoven was deaf. He discovered that by using a metal rod between the piano and his uh, jawbone, he could actually hear, in inverted commas, the music he's playing. And so these things sit in front of your ears, on your jaw, and essentially transmit the signal directly to your inner ear, completely bypassing your eardrum. And I've been using these things for a couple of months now. Uh, they're not the regular make that you've probably heard of, Aftershocks, or I think they've now rebranded them as Shocks. Um, the cheapest version of these I could find that had good reviews on Amazon came in at 36 99 uh, There's a link to these specific ones, uh, an affiliate link in the description below if you're interested, but they're around about half the price of the cheapest Shocks uh, that I could buy, uh, and I have never tried any of the other Shocks to, to compare them to. Uh, sound quality-wise, it's kind of quite middly, uh, and I mean that in terms of EQ. Uh, there's kind of a bit of a scoop in the middle, but to be honest with you, for the price that I paid for these and for what I'm using them for, I'm actually really quite impressed with the sound quality of these. Even when it's windy, because you're not listening through your ear, specifically this way, 
uh, you don't get any problems with the uh, the wind affecting it that way because it's being directly transmitted to your inner ear. I've also been using these on the Zwift with Discord and they work equally well with that. They do have a microphone in here so you can speak uh, on your phone, not that I've tried that out. I actually have found as well that the sound quality varies depending on where you sit them and it does take a little bit of practice to find a sweet spot where uh, the, the, the sound quality does improve quite dramatically. They are water resistant, they're IP55, which means they should be fine in the rain. Uh, and at 36.99, we'll take that and leave it. There are only two buttons on here. There's one on the body here that sits behind your ear and that turns, um, turns it on and off. It also turns the uh, volume up and down with a double tap or a triple tap. The most important button on this one though is the one that sits here. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there's one that sits just here. Now, this is the most important one because it means I can turn the music on and off uh, at the simple press of the button here. Even with gloves on, it's a really positive click. In fact, if I put it near my microphone, you can probably hear that. Which means even with thick winter gloves on, it's really easy just to press and tap that. Either when I get to traffic or sometimes if there's another cyclist I want to chat to or somebody that I meet along the way that I want to chat to, I can just press the side and hey presto, it goes off instantly. I thought the button presses might confuse me a little bit, but actually I've got to be honest, it's pretty straightforward. They are USB chargeable and they last uh, around about eight hours. So I, I basically charge these up on a Sunday night and they last me all week. So as I say, if I were to upgrade these, I'd probably go for the shocks and see what they're like. I wanted to buy some cheaper ones to see if it worked for me. But the point essentially is that now on those uh, bits of the journey that where it's safe for a start, but also a little bit monotonous, I can listen to a podcast or some music uh, and just kind of alleviate a little bit of that boredom factor that often on a Thursday night when it's rainy and windy and you really can't be bothered to ride home and the, uh, the warm bus is tempting you, these things might just be a bit of a game changer for me. Oh, mate. So there we have it. Another little commuting tool just to keep that commitment up. And uh, hopefully I might learn a few bits. Thinking I might even uh, go back to my Spanish lessons. Might do them via a podcast. So look out for that on the pod. Oh, can you imagine? YouTube videos. Me uh, in Spanish riding along in February in driving rain. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. There'll be more tips and tricks and items and things like that if you want to subscribe and you aren't already get the uh, thumbs up subscribe hit the notification bell all that stuff and i'll see you on the next video ride safely all right mate